Good evening, everybody. I am the Cynic. Everybody knows the story of Ebenezer Scrooge from A Christmas Carol, and his transformation from a cold, cynical asshole to a loving and generous man in a matter of a single night, thanks to three ghosts who emotionally manipulate and terrorize him into seeing the error of his ways. And don't lie, that's exactly what they did. But let's take a step back and analyze what made Scrooge the person he was for a moment. While the story of A Christmas Carol does focus on the actions and fears of Scrooge himself and his representation of the cutthroat corporate giants, it barely skims over an even bigger point. Why did Scrooge become the way he was when he started <clears throat> why did Scrooge become the way he was? When he started out under the tutelage of his master, Fezwig, who was described as a jolly and affectionate man. As such, when Ebenezer Scrooge started out, his personality was described as optimistic, light, and open-minded, going as far as to provide numerous extensions to those who he deemed in need for money that wasn't his under his more cutthroat boss, Jorkin. So, how did this kind of this kind-hearted young man turn into the cold and greedy money grubber he was <clears throat> in the story? That's the key question that nobody seems to ask for some reason. How did Scrooge become the way he was? Well, if you read the story, the story took place during a time of industry where new technologies were coming forth and making human interaction and business less essential, a time of great change. Scrooge had completed his learnings under Feswig and began working for Jorkin with his partner, Marley. As he worked, he began to see the great hardships of poverty, with people begging at his teller station for both loans and extensions. Unkept, hungry, desperate people groveling with their dignity and pride cast into the mud. This gave Scrooge two things. One, a very nice look at the poverty-stricken and how they lived, leading him to an almost phobia of such a lifestyle and gaining as much money as possible to prevent it from ever happening. And two, it showed him how bad people with mo how bad people were with money. He'd given chances with extreme promises and guarantees that the people couldn't possibly hope to live up to. But naive as he was, he took the good side of man and allowed them the time and or capital that they needed, much to Jorkin's chargon. Eventually, Scrooge had caught on to the fact as well, and became mistrustful of those wishing to borrow money, seeing many as not but thieves whose sole intent was to gamble gratification or investment scams. Of course, there were those who borrowed simply to put food on the table, but it wasn't his business or job to play poor people cat and save a hoe. The fact of the matter was, poor or not, these people were taking out loans they could never pay back. Thus taking advantage of Scrooge's kindness when he had it, and being in the business to make money and not foolishly throw it away to people who were little more than beggars on the street, it was only common sense that he'd be more critical of his lending to them. Now here's the tricky part. Unlike Jorkin's thriving business, Fezwig's soon crumbled due to his more costly and generous business practices. Jorkin focused on making his business and employees as efficient as and profitable as possible, while Fezwig was more interested in treating his employees like family and his business partners with affection and kindness, not being taken advantage of, but not trying to squeeze as much as he could out of them either. So, why did Jorkin become more profitable and Fezwig go out of business? Simply put, the consumer. We can blame the banks all we want and the people like Scrooge all we want, but the fact of the matter is, bankers like Scrooge aren't born. They are made. Both Jorkin and Scrooge had seen the greed and short-sightedness of the people and prepared accordingly, so they A. wouldn't be taken advantage of, and B. so they could make as much money as possible by being the most efficient. If the consumers didn't support businesses like Jorkin's over businesses like Fezwig's because the former was both cheaper and more efficient at the cost of being less kind and generous to its employees, then we'd see more support for the Fezwig's of the world. But we don't, and the businesses like the latter's fail for the reasons that the consumer values efficiency and shaky gambling gratifications. And Scrooge saw this. That 
is why Scrooge became more tight-fisted, because that was what worked. Any individual with basic understanding of economics can tell you that this is simply the principle of supply and demand. But why? When the consumers are willing to forego the Fezwigs, the kind and well-paying bosses at higher costs, for the Jorkins, less cost, more efficient, with less kindness, the world becomes a breeding ground for observing Scrooges. Because this is what people wanted, and is what works, Jorkin's efficiency and lower prices are what is preferred by the consumers of the world over Fezwig's more affectionate but higher prices, more affectionate business but higher prices. Thus, the aspiring business owners will see the good businessmen fail and the hard businessmen succeed. It's not that hard to say which one of these two outcomes is preferred. This is why I call it the Scrooge contagion effect and am trying to coin the phrase, because it's mainly the Scrooges of the world who will be able to succeed in business. And as more kind and generous Fezwigs fail, and more Scrooges and Jorkins survive to run businesses, the more people become tight-fisted with their cash, and as more people become tight-fisted with their cash, more kind and generous Fezwigs fail, and more Scrooges and Jorkins survive to run businesses. A nice cycle, really, and one that's very difficult to break. How does this pertain to feminism? It doesn't. It's merely a thought I've been having for quite some time now, and as much as I despise feminists, I don't want this channel to focus solely on them or on women. As I see it, the market is only a reflection of the will of the people. If a product or company isn't supported by the people, it will eventually fail, you know, save government subsidies. Oh yes, eventually the reflection will take on a consciousness of its own and act in desire for self-preservation, but even then it cannot survive without the will of the people. And that is why I very much dislike A Christmas Carol. Scrooge wasn't a bad guy, and he only did what worked because he saw and feared what didn't. His love interest? He worked himself sick to ensure they'd never be poor. Did his greed eventually consume him, leaving him to eat porridge and live in a rackety shack? Very much so. However, I'm not here to justify his behavior in regards to those around him, though I easily could. I'm just talking about the financial aspect. And the fact of the matter is, financially, the Scrooges of the world couldn't exist without people there to support them. Of course, there are many more factors related to this, like the economics of recessions and depressions, deeper economics, the Industrial Revolution, and capital shifts, but I'm not going to go into those either. Why? Because when it comes down to the Jorkins, Scrooges, and Fezwigs of the world, it all boils down to who the consumer is willing to ethically, morally, and financially support. In a way, I suppose Scrooge is one of the men going their own way who was f thrown back in line. He was surrounded by people who just wanted him for his money, minus his family and fiancé, grew cold and cynical over the fact, became self-interested, and was terrorized by a plot device to make him accept the meaning of Christmas, or accept the collectivist meaning, or the greater good, by playing on his emotions rather than his logic. But why Scrooge's amygdala would be for another video that I'm not sure if I'm going to do or not. In conclusion, pertaining to the both why and how the Scrooge contagion effect has taken hold in society of both yesteryear and today, I suppose this quote from V for Vendetta sums it up best. Truth be told, if you're looking for the guilty, you need only look into a mirror. At any rate, that's it from me tonight. I'm the Cynic, everybody. Have a nice day.